in the name of God, who is grace and love and communion. Good morning. Well, they were full on stuck. They were completely stuck. The story begins in the dark. The women have come in kindness to mourn their friend. They've come because so much that they care about has been taken away from them. The bad guys won. And they have come simply to observe, to mourn, just to settle in to this new reality which is just, well, at least a little less. They are stuck. And even when events begin to look different than they expected, they can't quite see it. The story in the Gospel of John is full of confusion and running back and forth, trying to figure out what's happened. They did not yet believe. And so even when they see that Jesus is gone, well, where'd you take my friend? Give him back. Give him back. All we want to do is to settle in and accept that life will be just a little bit less. There's not much we can do. The story begins in the dark and they are stuck. And we might be stuck too. We live in a city where the shelters are more full than ever before. The shelters are twice as full, and our offices are half empty. There is violence on our subways. The lines for soup kitchens and food pantries, including the people eating this morning at our cathedral, get longer and longer. Asylum seekers come to New York seeking safety, and the city tells them to go home to go away. And in our world, well, children are starving in Gaza. The war in Ukraine is a stalemate. Our political candidates are selling Bibles on the internet as if they were timeshare condos. Meanwhile, in our own jails, on Rikers Island. They have banned the Bible and sacred texts because it's not safe. We are full on stuck. In our own lives, how this day are we simply settling for less, accepting there's not much we can do that maybe the bad guys win. But today, today is Easter day. Today is the unstuck day in our lives as Christian community. Today is the unstuck day for the whole world. The very first thing that Christians proclaimed was that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. And in his rising, our lives are different. In his rising, the world is transformed. In his rising, we are completely unstuck. These are the experiences and prayers that we receive over many generations that we hear Peter preaching and Acts of the Apostles. Now, we know Peter from the Gospels, right? Peter can't put two words together. Peter, when he does put two words together, always gets it wrong, which I myself appreciate. 
Because if Peter can get it wrong, well, we can too. But here is Peter moving in Acts chapter 10 into unfamiliar territory. He's in a new place with non-religious folks. Unfamiliar and maybe unfriendly territory. And he proclaims the word. He proclaims the experience of what God's love means in resurrection. A Jesus who gives us peace. A spirit who gives us power. A community doing good and healing the world from oppression. This is the experience. These are the prayers we receive over many generations on this Easter day that we might say together, Alleluia. Say it with me. No, no, say it like we received it. Alleluia. That's our proclamation this Easter day. The faith over many generations that reminds us that we are made new in God's love and God's grace. That tells us we don't have to settle for just a little bit less. That tells us in the biggest things the bad guys will not win. But God's love is greater. Will you say amen with me? We are loved. We are called to transformation. We are unstuck. Say it again. We are unstuck. Okay, let's do it again. We are and our future is bigger than our past. Now let that settle for a moment. Let that settle for a moment in your life and the life of the world around us. Our future is bigger than our past. That is the promise of this Easter day. That's the promise of those women who went to the tomb and saw Jesus. That's the promise of the disciples who preached in unfamiliar and unfriendly territory. Our future is bigger than our past. That is the words of Sam Wells, who's a priest and a theologian in London. And Wells says that the church in this day and age must listen to Jesus' gospel. This gospel of power and spirit and healing and peace and respond to the needs of the world. And in this generation, in this moment when we're all strained, the question the gospel gives to us is, can we imagine? Can we live with an Easter imagination? Not just on this day, but every day. Can we find the hope we yearn for in the experiences and stories of each other. Our future is bigger than our past. Now, we hear the gospel story, we hear the sermon of Simon Peter in Acts. A future bigger than our past isn't grandiose. It's more connected. The Holy Spirit moves at ground level in all of our neighborhoods, in all of our communities. A bigger future means we see each other the way God sees us, with love. And Easter imagination tells us that love changes the world, changes our lives, that's the experience we receive over generations from our ancestors. That we might recognize in their faith possibilities for our own imagination. We might recognize in their experiences and their prayers our own yearning for hope. Now, this 
is my first Easter as your bishop. And there's a vow, an ancient vow, in the ordination rite that says bishops are to be guardians of the faith. Sounds official, doesn't it? Turns out Starbucks doesn't give discounts for being guardian of the faith. Also at home, they don't change the channel when the guardian of faith tells them to. <laughs> but this morning, we might accept that challenge of our church across generations to be guardians of the faith together. To know that God's expansive love on this Easter day welcomes all of us, all of us, no exceptions. That human dignity is non-negotiable, that is Easter imagination. And to recognize that you and I have been called to be guardians of this imagination of a future bigger than our past. We've called to be curators of sacred hope. It is the gift of struggles across many generations and that we receive again this day and say, Alleluia. And so on this day, as we are guardians of this Easter imagination together, we bring our own experiences and prayers to needs and cares of the world, to a world that feels stuck and needs this message of love and grace, to a world that is stuck and needs not only our imagination, but our work. So in all of our communities across the Diocese of New York, who are proclaiming Easter and Alleluia this morning, we join God's call for renewal. In all our neighborhoods, across our 10 counties from Staten Island to Poughkeepsie. We join God's work, Jesus' work of healing. This day, we call for our city to welcome those souls who've been given to us with care and compassion, to see in them the same possibilities that we know God sees in us. And on this day, I call on the mayor of New York to end the ban on sacred texts in our jails. <clears throat> that we might experience the hope of those words for people who are seeking redemption just as we are. Our future in Christ, our future in God's love is bigger than our past. The story begins in the dark, but it continues in the light, in the light of grace in the light of resurrection. And this day, we accept the gift of that resurrection to be guardians of Easter imagination, to be unstuck together for each other and for the world, that together on this Easter day and every day, we might be curators of that sacred hope. Happy Easter. In Christ's name, amen.